So as we have talked to our employers in our market of Arkansas and in Ohio and Florida and different places, and again, as we, as we focus on the small to midsize, these are the types of things that we hear from the C-suite, from the leaders of an organization that's frustrating to them about their health insurance program. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands as to which one of these hits, but I'm guessing that some of these resonate within your organization and some of the frustrations that you've had as a business owner dealing with your health insurance. But, um, you know, take a look at that and then remember that as, as we go through these next three slides. So again, I kind of use the term renting and owning. Renting your health insurance versus owning your health insurance. In the next, next few slides, we're going to kind of talk a little bit more about renting versus ownership. So we relate renting being fully insured. And let me say right here, there's nothing wrong with being fully insured. There's nothing wrong with that, that being your strategy. And year over year, if it's the best thing to be for your business, that's your business decision, that's your strategy. We've been doing it for a long time. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, we're here to introduce some new ideas and some new options for you to consider. But when you're renting your health insurance, it's kind of like uh, paying for your cable bill. No matter how much you pay, how much you use it every month, you pay the same amount. A self-funded plan, which is what we're talking about when you own your health insurance solution, a self-funded plan works more like your power bill. You'll pay some fixed costs, but the balance of the bill is based on your utilization or your usage. So renting versus owning. And one of the, one of the myths we like to try to address is everyone is self-insured. Now, wait a minute, Bob. I'm not self-insured. I'm fully insured. Everyone is self-insured. It comes down to terminology and the balance of risk and reward. So if you, if you look, and I'm going to, hopefully the camera won't lose me. Well, maybe hopefully it will. Um, if you look here, this represents the fully insured, basically the makeup of a fully insured premium. You have administrative costs. You have state taxes. You have pooling charges, which kind of act like a stop loss internally for you. And you have your claims, your claims bucket, what they expect in your reserves. And these are all fixed costs. You pay your premium every month. And this is what your fully insured rate primarily is made up of. If you look over here at self-funding, Administrative costs, administrative costs, state taxes, state taxes, they're a little bit less than self-insurance because your premium's smaller and you pay a tax on that. You have stop-loss premium, specific and aggregate, which we'll talk about, which kind of works similar to pooling charges and fully insured. And then the rest is there for your claim. Really no difference between being fully insured and self-insured as far as the makeup of your costs and what your costs to cover your employees and their family members are based on your risk. The little bit of difference is the first year of a self-funded plan, if it's priced properly, is going to be about 3 to 5% more than a fully insured. And that's the risk premium that you pay for the chance that if you have a good year, you get money back. And we'll talk more about that. So any questions right here? Again, self-insured, fully insured, everything's the same. It's just renting versus owning. So I'm going to need a volunteer prop here, and I'm going to borrow you, Susan. Just You just ate, took that last bite of peanut ball, but you're fine. So... <laughs> This is dollar represents your fully insured premium that you pay every month. It's a solid dollar you pay every month. About 20% of that, if you're under 100, and 15% if you're over 100, but let's stick with under 100, about 20% of this dollar, 20 cents of this dollar, goes to fixed administrative costs. You're gonna, you pay those out of your premium. 80 cents of this dollar that you're paying to the carrier, fully insured, is going to pay your claims. It's being set aside to pay your claims. When your people go to the doctor, when they go to the hospital, 
when they use their prescription benefits. So 20 cents, administration, customer service, billing, managing networks, all of that, 80 cents, the majority of it is going to cover your claims. You pay this dollar, and at the end of the year, if you found out that you only spent 70 cents of this dollar, who's kept your 10 cents? The carrier. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's a strategy to purchase, but that's, that's the, the low risk piece of being fully insured. I'm going to pay my dollar, and no matter what, my costs are covered. If you spent 90 cents instead of 80 cents, they don't ask for any more. You paid your dollar. Here comes your renewal and so on and so forth. So rates are going to go up. Rates are going to go up a little bit less. But this is your fully insured. Got it? So I'm going to put your fully insured dollar right there. Now, you see the change. We're in a self-funded or what we call refund eligible program. Instead of that dollar being solid, it's made up of change. So, the same 20 cents that goes to administration are going to go to administration in a self-insured plan. You're going to pay that no matter what. That leaves in my hand here 85 cents. Now, wait a minute. 20 and 85 don't add up to a dollar. You're right. So if I go back one slide and I show you, remember, 3 to 5% is the cost that you're going to pay for the chance that you can get money back. So you're going to have your 85 cents of change here. Just like the first example, you had 70 cents worth of it go to claims. So I'm going to take 70 cents away. So 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That went to pay your claims. There's 15 cents left. You're self-insured. That's your money. And the dollar? No, the dollar's fully insured. <laughs> you lost, you know, no, you chose to not use the solid dollar and go with the change. So you've got 15 cents left over in your bank account or to carry forward or whatever, but that's your money. Let's say you had 85 cents worth of claims. You don't get any money back, but you're not going to pay any more than the 85 cents. If you had 90 cents, you're still only going to pay that 85 cents because there's protection for that. So the difference between being fully insured and renting versus owning or refund eligible being self-funded is it's change versus a solid dollar. And if this 85 cents that's being set aside here. Whatever you don't use for claims is yours. Question. No question? Okay, I'm going to keep an eye on that. Those are my props. They travel with me everywhere. So... There's other advantages to owning your health insurance by being self-insured or in a refund eligible program. And that is one, you have control. You get data and information to help you manage your second or third largest business expense that you have. And that data comes in the form of monthly claims information. You get rewards or refunds for good years. Change left over stays in your bank account, stays in your account. You can use it for future renewal increases. You can build up a reserve, but that money stays in your bank account, in your control. You get wellness tools and support to maximize opportunity for rewards. When you own your health insurance, when you're responsible for that change, when you invest in wellness and risk management and transparent pharmacy programs and strong disease management and health coaching and strong primary care physician care that helps manage your costs, you receive the direct benefit of that because with, as long as, as you're impacting that health care cost and impacting your change, you get the financial benefit. 
And when you consider joining an employee benefit captive, you get the community of employers to share best practices and support. And understand as these programs are being introduced with our coalition partners, the only way you can get access to these programs is to be a member of the Kansas Business Group on Health. That's not a penalty. That's an enhancement because you have become a part of an organization with other like-minded employers whose goal is to support and help each other through education, through programs, through resources to help bring employers together and share best practices and share concepts, and that's a positive, to make an impact on a community. So those are additional advantages in addition to change back from your money to being in a refund eligible program. So as we look at the spectrum, and if I was really cool with technology, I'd figure out how to make this teeter-totter, but consider that kind of a teeter-totter. And fully insured being on the far left, renting, very little risk, very little to no reward. But again, for a lot of businesses, it's the best strategy for them. But as you look in the past, really the only other option went all the way over there to the far right, which was self-funding. And self-funding is scary, especially to a small to mid-sized employer. Some of you may have considered going self-funding in the past, and maybe your broker advisor said, yeah, but you're too small, or it's kind of risky. There's a lot of concerns with it, and that's true. That's why what we're introducing are two additional options that are kind of baby steps along the way towards a teeter-totter of high risk, hang up there on the top, your feet are dangling. Okay, that's self-funded, so let's kind of you know, play and get it to the middle. You have level funding and employee benefits captives, and that's really what we're introducing to the market with the Kansas Business Group on Health. Two additional options for employers to consider that have a little more risk for the employer, but a little more reward. Employee benefit captive, a little more risk, even more reward. And then self-funding all the way out there. Again, we're looking at groups that are primarily under 300, 350, 400 employee lives, small to mid-sized businesses. 